Are you trying to get a government job? I'm going to go over five government jobs that as long as you're a U.S. citizen, you can apply to. You don't have to be a veteran. You do not have to already be in the government. These are completely open to the public. Anyone can apply. The first one is the 0301 job series. This is an administrative clerk position with the Air Force. And on the low end, $20,000 a year, but it can go all the way up into the six figures. You will probably be dealing a lot with correspondence, writing up emails, getting on Microsoft Word, dealing a little bit with PowerPoint, tracking a lot of the correspondence systems that are already in place. So this position is a 12 month position, meaning that if you apply one time, you are considered multiple times throughout the year. You can look at it and see that it's open for 12 months. And I think this is probably the best bang for your buck, the most value for the time that you're actually spending. There's no other jobs in the private sector where you apply one time and they keep considering your application. They consider it one time and they're off to the next candidate. Also in this job, there is a promotion ladder. That means after 12 months, you're eligible to get promoted to the next GS grade. And with administrative type work, there's usually telework options that are available to you. And you can look in this job announcement and it says it right here, telework eligible. The next job is in the 0007 job series. And this is a correctional officer with the Department of the Interior. The salary for this one starts out at $40,000 a year and it goes all the way up to $66,000 a year. With this one, you're going to be booking inmates, providing security, doing surveillance. You might have to transport inmates from one location to the next. I'm pretty sure you've seen the TV shows of the jail guards and all the stuff that they go through. I mean, it's pretty much going to be like that, except it's going to be a lot more dangerous. To be qualified for this job, you only need 12 months of experience. It's just general experience. Could have gotten it at Burger King. Maybe you worked at McDonald's for a year. Maybe you were in the military for a couple of years. That would qualify you to actually become a correctional officer. But what if you never held a paying job? Well, that's okay because volunteer experience, that also counts. If you volunteer for 12 months, that counts as 12 months of general experience. Now, keep in mind, once you are hired, you will be sent to a correctional academy. And also there's a firearm requirement here. So it's safe to assume that there's no teleworking options with this job. The next job is in the 0189 job series. This is a recreation assistant job with the Department of Agriculture. The salary for this one is between thirty-three dollars and $37,000 a year, and they're hiring in seven different states. This is essentially a lifeguard position. You will be scheduling and coordinating activities. You will be a water safety instructor. Now, the requirement for this job is six months of general experience and six months of relevant experience. Say as a teenager, maybe you were in high school, you did some lifeguarding. That type of experience, that would qualify you for this type of job. And the great thing about this, this job is actually in the GS series. So with the federal government, they have GS pay grade and they have WG. GS is considered white collared and WG is considered blue collared. So it really blew my mind that this position, which is essentially a lifeguard, is considered white collared work. And if you were to get a position like this, you're in the GS system and you're in the competitive service, meaning that you can apply for other government jobs after just 12 months. You can use this as a stepping stone to get better positions. When you start applying for government jobs, there's two critical parts. The first one is your resume. The second is how often are you applying? But there's a third part that people don't really talk about that much, and it's hiring events. You can find virtual hiring events on usajobs.gov. But some agencies, they don't report that information. So what I have done is once a month, I pull that information out. I include it in my newsletter completely for free. If you want to sign up for the monthly newsletter, check out the link in the description below. The next job is in the 0203 job series. This is a human resource assistant with the Department of Veteran Affairs. The salary for this one is between $47,000 and $61,000 a year. It is usually pretty difficult to get into human resources in the federal government, but this position only requires 12 months. And the type of experience it's looking for is entry-level administration or HR work, communicating and analyzing information. You don't have to have any specific education. You can qualify on your experience, but if you have zero experience, you can qualify with a four-year bachelor degree. Once you start working as a 0203, say you work there a year or two, then you can start targeting the 0201 positions. And those, those positions are the higher GS grade positions 
in HR. The next one is postal carriers. This one's not on usajobs.gov. Instead, go to the career section of usps.com. Select the state that you live in and go to the delivery customer service area. The pay for this usually starts off at around $20 an hour and people either love it or they hate it. It depends on the area. In some locations, you can be overworked. In other areas, it could be quite nice. Now keep in mind, this type of job will offer you a pension and it offers you 401k matching. Another thing to consider with postal jobs is oftentimes, even though they're in the accepted service, they have interagency agreements. And that means after working in the postal service, you can apply for a competitive service type position on usajobs.gov and use that interagency agreement and you can apply and be found eligible and qualified for certain positions based on your experience because you're in the postal service. Okay, so we have to talk about two of the main ways that can help you get into the government. The first is direct hire. If you search direct hire on usajobs.gov, and start applying to those type of positions, as long as you have the right experience, you are not going to have to worry about a veteran bumping you off the referral list. Veterans preference is not applied when using direct hire. And this is one of the reasons it could be advantageous for you to use. Another thing is the recent student pathway. If you do something as simple as a 12 month certificate, take 12 months, go to the community college, get a certification you can use that to open up a pathway where you can now apply for a job that's only open to recent students. It's not open to current government employees. It might not even be open to veterans. So if you're already in an educational type program, keep in mind, as soon as you graduate, you can use this pathway for two years. If you are interested in pursuing federal employment, you might have some questions about the federal hiring process. I did a live stream recently where I answer over a dozen questions about the federal hiring process. And if you're interested in that, I want you to watch this video next. If you would like to see more videos like this, please click like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.